Real quick before we jump into the video guys, for the rest of this year I'm going to be on a fundraising campaign to raise a minimum of a thousand pounds for the Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. For more information on the charity and what it does and for the donation links, please look in the description below. And thank you all for your continued support. Enjoy the show. What's going on guys? Right by my teacher now, and we are back with another episode of our Sinnoh shenanigans. We are doing a tier list today, ranking every single Pokemon introduced in the Sinnoh region, of course. Always good to do a nice little tier list. We did a tier list a long time ago on stream, and I got a lot of flack for some of my opinions, but it was all good. But some of my opinions have changed since then, either due to playthroughs or various other things. Uh, I do want to point out, of course, while this is a tier list, it is my opinion and my opinion only. Do not stress if it's not the same as yours, if your favorite Pokemon is not my favorite, uh, or if I put it in D tier. That's perfectly okay. You're entitled to your opinion, even if you're wrong. Just kidding. Obviously. Uh, but we're here to have a good time. We're just going to rank the tier list and we're going to have some good fun. Of course, if, no, if you want to have a go at doing this tier list yourself, the link to the tier list will be down in the description below. Feel free to make your own tier list and I'd love to see yours as well. Alrighty. But without any further ado, let's get it on, on into the action, shall we? You can see my cursor so you can see what I'm hovering over. Because I'm just that nice. Alright, let's do starters straight away anyway. Now, Turtwig is like my least favorite of the base form starters, but I actually don't hate Turtwig. Uh, I kind of like the whole snapback turtle uh, concept, and it's kind of interesting it became a grass type. Grottle, I'm kind of a similar sort of indifferent to. And uh, Torterra, I actually am not a big fan of, uh, unfortunately. Like, I like its design, I like its cards out, but it, it's just such a weak Pokemon compared to the other starters that I don't really feel like I ever have any affinity towards Torterra. Usually I would just evolve it for the Dax and put it in the PC. Uh, that would be it. Chimchar is my favorite of the starters, but I don't actually think it's all that god tier. Uh, Monferno, I'm pretty indifferent on, but Infernape is S tier. Uh, Infernape is absolutely insane. Uh, it's fun to use in competitive, it's fun in playthroughs. It is my favorite final starter by quite some way, although Empoleon has caught up to it a little bit more recently. But yeah, Infernape's definitely one of those like marquee Gen 4 Pokemon. I think pretty much anyone in Gen 4 who played it regularly really likes Infernape, and there's pretty good reason for that. Alright, Piplup, I like it a little more than Turtwig, uh, but I don't like it as much as Chimchar. Primplup, kind of mediocre to be honest, not super great. And Empoleon is just behind Infernape for me. Um, pretty solid, final evolution, really good competitively. Uh, actually, a really, really good typing, to be fair. Uh, Water Steel is a somewhat un underexplored typing, but it is a really, really cool typing, and I do like its design too. Uh, I obviously like its origins and stuff like that. Alright, as early games birds go, Starly is pretty decent. Staravia is not that great, honestly. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a weird evolution, but Staraptor is another S tier. Staraptor is absolutely insane. Um, it just does so much damage. Uh, it's really fun to use competitively. Uh, not least because of Reckless Brave Bird Double Edge. Uh, just pop a Choice Band on it and watch it do work. Um, but Intimidate is also really nice for Nuzlocke as well. So I do like me some Staraptor. It was actually my favorite um, early game Bard Pokemon until Corviknight came out. So Staraptor is definitely up there for me. Alright, Bidoof is nice for the memes, but I hate B-Barrel. B-Barrel is the only D tier right now. Uh, really can't stand by Barrel. Just such a terrible Pokemon. Um, as much as people like to meme on it. It's just not really all that funny. Um, I don't really care for the evolution too much. It's only ever been an HM slave. And even then I don't use always use it for that. Alright. Cricketot. Kind of meh to be honest. Cricketoon actually is a little better. Uh, obviously shout outs to Tiny Tina and her nickname. I did a whoop. We actually used this on. Um, I believe it was our Gen 5. Um, Nuzlocke in the Malefic Top Cat Nuzlocke Gauntlet that we did. Uh, we had a Cricketune on our team then. I actually put in a lot of work in the early game too. Actually really, really strong. Uh, it was kind of surprising how fun that was to use. Uh, I do like it. Obviously, it's Cry definitely gives it, it some merit. But in terms of its actual viability, it's not the best Pokemon in the world. Obviously, I'm not too bothered by competitive usage per se. It is a reason why I would like a lot of these Pokemon. Uh, but it, just because they're somewhat decent and competitive, it doesn't make them my favorites. All right. Shinx. I like Shinx. It's kind of nice. I like Luxio. Uh, Luxray used to be S tier for me. Uh, but it's kind of fallen off a little bit. 
I'd still say it's probably A tier, though. Uh, I don't think it's a terrible Pokemon. Just wish it was better. Uh, I would just wish they gave it some stat buffs. Maybe give it a couple of extra moves. Because uh, it's kind of missing a few things to just be really, really good. Which is kind of unfortunate, because it is a cool design. It is definitely one of my favorite designed Pokemon. Even if it's not, like, the best competitively. Alright, but you and kind of somewhat indifferent to massive fan of Roserade. That is an S tier, uh, immediately. Again, one of those Pokemon that's not the best competitively. Um, it w benefited a lot from having hidden power because of the ability technician, of course. But I really like its design. I like its concept. And it's also a really fun Pokemon to use in playthroughs. I've used it quite a fair bit. Things like Spikes and Sleep Powder. Uh, definitely really fun to use. Uh, it does hit pretty hard, too, with technician. Uh, you just run medium base power moves and just hit really hard with it. It's really fun to try out. All right. Granados, not the biggest fan of. Rampardos, I'm a little bit more of a fan of, but not super huge on it. It's a cool Pokemon. Uh, it doesn't have too much merit, obviously. Uh, it does hit really, really hard. Uh, it's a really fun Pokemon in lower tier competitive, but I don't play a lot of low tier competitive. Uh, other people that I know would prefer Rampardos more than I do. Uh, Bastiodon was kind of a bit of a letdown, unfortunately. Uh, I really liked Bastiodon at first, but then I just saw how little it really offers to anything. Like, it's not that great in a playthrough. Like, yes, okay, it tanks hits really well, it's incredibly bulky, but it doesn't do much other than that, and that's kind of the biggest problem I have with it. Plus, its design is a little bit mediocre. It's literally just a castle gate with a with a body. Uh, not really all that fun. Burmy, I have a morbid hatred of. Uh, obviously, the Protect Spam. Uh, War Madame really does not improve it in any way, shape, or form. Um, to be honest, neither really does Martha. Uh, gotta be honest, this whole evolution line kind of sucks. Uh, pretty annoying Pokemon in your playthroughs where it just constantly clicks Protect. And honestly, like, War Madame, not really all that fun. Um, that being said, though, uh, my good buddy Average in our know, last Fire Red Soul Link did have a War Madame. that actually started doing pretty well for a little while, but again, like, that's a very specific niche instance. Alrighty, Combi, I hate. Uh, Vespaquen, I like a little bit more, though. Um, Combi, I just really don't have any respect for, personally. Uh, I just think it's such a lazy... Well, not a lazy design, it's kind of corny. Like, instead of just a basic bee, it's the honeycomb that the, the bee normally uses with wings. It looks kind of derpy, uh, but it's uh, not terrible. Oh, well, not completely terrible, but it is kind of terrible in usage-wise. Like, it's pretty terrible in a playthrough. If you get it in a Nuzlocke and it's a male combi, it really just sucks. And you would never use it. It doesn't have good stats. It doesn't have a good move pool either. Uh, so it's definitely not that great. Vespaquen has a few little things going for it with the extra bulk and its signature moves are actually kind of nice. Um, but again, not really a Pokemon that super interests me. Um, it's an alright Pokemon, but as bug Pokemon go, it's kind of mediocre. Uh, there are better bugs out there, even in, in um, earlier gens. Alright, Pachirizu, I have quite a bit of a fondness for. Uh, obviously, he, many people who have played competitive for a long time will remember Sage and Park's Pachirizu that won the VGC Worlds in 2015, I believe it was. Uh, very, very powerful set. Really fun Pokemon to use. And we've had it a few times in our playthroughs, and it's been really, really strong. Uh, it's been fun to use. I do like it. As far as Pikachu go, clones go, it's probably my favorite one. Maybe except for Dedenne, but um, Pachirizu is definitely really fun to uh, work with. Buizel and Floatzel. These I'm kind of somewhat indifferent on, to be honest. Like, I don't hate them, but I don't love them. They're kind of just like a optional water types if you don't pick Piplup as your starter. And it's not that bad. Like, it's got decent stats. It's kind of okay to use, but uh, typically I wouldn't really use it in a playthrough, and I certainly would not consider it in competitive if I was looking for a water type, because it's not bulky enough uh, to be a typical bulky, bulky water for drafting. And for ladder play, it's not necessarily offensive enough when for alligator exists, which does the same job but better. So, Floatzel's alright, but not super big on it. Cherubi is kind of mediocre. Uh, Cherim? I've had some good usage out of Cherim. Um, uh, in competitive in VGC when I used the Sun team with Groudon. But I don't know if I like it all that much. It's kind of a niche pick. Uh, it's one of those little niche options, which it's okay. But um, you would obviously use other support Pokemon like Litigant and stuff like that if you had the opportunity to. Uh, especially if you're playing Sun. But yeah, it's an alright Pokemon. Not super keen on it. Shellos, kind of like this little guy. Uh, Gastrodon, I'm actually a massive fan of. Uh, this is going in S. 
which might seem a little bit odd, but Gastrodon having only um, one weakness to grass is actually really nice. It does also have Storm Drain, so it can buff up its special attack if you hit it with a water move, which is kind of fun to use in doubles uh, if you're running Surf Strats, things like that, especially in a Dynamax format. I remember my good friend Rotten Tomato 5 tried doing this. Um, with one of his uh, draft league seasons, I think it was RBL season one, he had Gastro. Um, so yeah, that was kind of fun. But yeah, definitely a good Pokemon. I like it in my playthroughs, especially if I'm starting with Infernape as my starter. Uh, Gastrodon is usually my go-to water uh, for doing a playthrough in Gen 4, just because it is actually that bulky. All right, Ambipom is an ugly abomination. We do not talk about Ambipom. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. Kind of a disappointing evolution from Apom. Drifloon and Drifblim, pretty mediocre Pokemon. I don't hate them. I don't love them either. Uh, certainly nothing too endearing about them. I do kind of like the lore behind them. They are obviously very terrifying Pokemon in that sense. Definitely an interesting option. But other than that, I'm not super keen on them. Baneri, not a huge fan of. Lopunny, not a huge fan of. But Mega Lopunny, however, which is in this list, is actually a Pokemon I'm a huge fan of. Uh, not quite S tier, but I really do love this Pokemon. I've used this in Draft League quite a few times. Uh, it's really fast, hits really hard. Um, and the fact that it now gets access to close combat as well means it's got very spammable moves. It doesn't have to rely on high jump kick anymore, uh, which is really nice. Very, very scary Pokemon with Scrappy. Of course, its stab moves can hit ghost types, uh, which is a problem <laughs> for a lot of people that have to deal with this thing. I actually didn't realize Magas were in this list, but uh, they are anyway. This Maggie is pretty cool Pokemon. I don't mind Miss Magius at all. Uh, yeah, I'll put it. I'll put it in A tier. Sure, why not? I think it's actually a really fun little ghost type. Uh, not the best ghost type in the world, in my opinion. Obviously, Gengar is far superior, but Miss Magius is pretty cool. I wish it was dark type, though. I wish it was ghost dark instead of just pure ghost. Um, ghost dark would have been pretty interesting. Would have given um, Spiritomb a competitor, I guess. I think Spiritomb was probably the reason it wasn't ghost dark. Uh, but it is a really, really fun little Pokemon. Uh, and actually, it's a Pokemon you can get relatively early into a Gen 4 playthrough, um, so long as you can get the stone to evolve it. So, because uh, Mistrevious you get in Lost Tower, I think, which isn't that far into the game. I think that's only two gems in. So, yeah, it's not terrible. It's a really good Pokemon nonetheless. I think it's worth uh, considering for a playthrough. Alrighty, Honchcrow is an S-Tiermon. Love this Pokemon. Uh, definitely a very good competitor for Staraptor as my flying type of choice. Uh, this thing hits really, really hard, um, especially with things like Sucker Punch. Uh, it's a really, really fun Pokemon. It does get access to Super Luck, so you can run Super Luck Night Slash for crits, uh, which is pretty interesting. Definitely kind of exciting. Uh, it's a good Pokemon. I think a lot of people tend to gravitate towards Honchkrow or Staraptor for flying type usage in Gen 4 competitive play. Alrighty, Glamiel, kind of meh. Uh, Perugly. I have a lot of traumatic experiences with Perugly from doing my playthroughs. Um, I actually lost a Nuzlocke to a Commander Mars um, and her Perugly when I was doing an unrandomized version. Uh, yeah, this thing's a pain. Uh, it hits really, really hard, especially in the early game. Uh, and if you don't have a fighting type to knock it out, it's a problem. Chengling kind of sucks. Don't like it. Don't really care about it. All right. Then we have Stunky and Skuntank, which I'm actually all right on Skuntank. I've used it a fair bit in competitive. It's a decent defogger. Uh, so... Not a bad option. Gets decent coverage on the physical and special side, too. Uh, it's a pretty fun Pokemon to use. Not the best, but it's one of those mid-tier picks that I like in competitive play, so that's kind of why I like it. Uh, Bronzor and Bronzong. I'm kind of meh on them. I don't hate them, but I don't love them. Uh, decent enough still Psychic types, but there is actually another still Psychic in this generation, which is considerably better. Uh, we will get onto that a little bit later on down the line, but Bronzong's one of those Pokemon I generally don't mind. Uh, it's a decent Trick Room setter as well, if you want to play that way. Baby Pokemon, all of them I despise. Don't really like them, to be honest. I uh, just don't really feel like they had a place in the game. Uh, they weren't really needed for the decks. They just kind of felt like decks filler to me. Chato, uh, I'm kind of a little on the dislike side of Chato. I don't hate it, but I don't don't think it's all that great, so I put it in C tier. Spiritomb is an A tier pick. I really like this Pokemon, especially in Gen 4 when it had no weaknesses. Uh, it didn't offer necessarily the best offensive stats, but it had some somewhat passable bulk and with access to pressure as well. It was actually really good for stalling out um, opposing teams. I actually once beat Cynthia's team with only Spiritomb uh, just by pressure stalling out her Pokemon, which was pretty funny. Uh, definitely one of my favorite picks. 
Now, the Gibble line is S tier. I love all of these. I've used Gibble in Little Cup. I use Goodbye in a lower tier draft, and I use Garchomp. Uh, obviously fairly often in competitive. We actually have it on our current RBL Season 3 team. But I really hate Mega Garchomp. <laughs> I have to say it. I think this Mega is terrible. Like, it trades the speed stat, which made it viable. Um, it loses 10 base speed for, like, a lot of offensive stats. And I don't really like it. It makes it a lot weaker into a lot of Pokemon. Uh, there's a lot of Pokemon into the format that's faster than 92 base speed. Uh, so Garchomp's kind of in a very weird spot. Plus, its design is ugly as hell. I really don't like it. It just doesn't make sense. Munchlax is an A-tier pick. I've used this quite a fair bit in Little Cup. I really like it. Uh, actually, it's kind of an okay baby Pokemon. Usually, I don't like baby Pokemon, as you can see, by having four of them down in the um, D-tier right now. But Munchlax is an exception, because even though it's a stupidly obnoxiously rare Pokemon to get in the playthroughs, like, it used to be, like, 1% chance in only four honey trees in the region that was completely randomized. Uh, it was pretty stupid, but uh, Munchlax actually competitively is kind of fun. I used it in um, RBL Season 2. Uh, I actually beat a Regigigas with it. Um, Shoutouts to Dad's Ride. That was a really fun series. Uh, so definitely worth a watch if you haven't watched that. Alrighty. Next up is the Lucario line. Uh, Riolu is A tier, but Lucario, of course, is my favorite Gen 4 Pokemon. So clearly going to be an S tier and going to be right at the front. Uh, it doesn't even want to go to the front. There we go. And Mega Lucario can join it. I actually really like Mega Lucario. It's very, very scary. Very, very powerful. Often banned in most competitive formats. Because it just does too much damage with that adaptability. Uh, but it's a really, really strong Pokemon. I love Lucario's design. Uh, obviously, it's one of those kind of mainstream Pokemon. Oh, you like Lucario because it's Gen 4. But it's a great design. It's a great Pokemon. So no reason not to like it. Uh, Hippopotas. I always think this is a Gen 5 Pokemon. I always forget it's Gen 4. Uh, and Hippowdon, not super keen on, to be honest. It's a Sand Setter, but it's a worse Tyranitar, so I don't generally pick it. Uh, Drapion, uh, I'm kind of indifferent on Skaroopy. Uh, I've had some good experiences with Drapion. I'll put it in A tier. Shoutouts to Matt Flame, of course. This is one of his dream team picks, uh, as well. But, uh, it's an alright Pokemon. I've had good usage of it in competitive, but it's not the best. Alrighty. Krogunk. Uh, I actually really like Krogunk. Uh, likes Krogunk in the anime, beating Brock up all the time. Toxicroak is S tier. It's one of my favorite picks. Um, definitely love this Pokemon in rain teams. I've used this a lot in competitive, um, in my brain days, especially back in Gen 4 and 5. I used to be known for my rain teams. Um, Toxicroak was one of my signature Pokemon back then. Love that pick. It's a great pick in rain. Uh, it's one of the few physical rain sweepers in the format. Uh, Carnivine's kind of meh. Like, it does have a nice little thing going for it. It's the only pure grass type with Levitate, but... That's about all it has going for it as a fun little fact. Finion, kind of forgettable. Same with Luminion, honestly. Uh, very forgettable Pokemon. Not super keen on it in general. Manti kind of falls foul of the baby Pokemon curse. Uh, don't really like it. Didn't see many good addition to Manti. Manti was fine anyway. Uh, Snover. I like Snover. Don't hate Snover. Obama Snow. Probably about the same. I'm kind of indifferent to. Magar Obama Snow. I don't like it as much, to be honest. I've never really used Mega Obama Snow in competitive play. I don't actually know if it's any good as a Hail Setter. I'm assuming it's not, because I very rarely ever see it, but... Uh, it's the, it's one of those that's an interesting idea. It's an Abominable Snowman, I guess, but sure, whatever. Weavile is S tier. Uh, one of the best mons in the game. Uh, really good for a playthrough and exceptional good competitive Pokemon. Magnezone is less so for me. Uh, I love this Pokemon competitively, but playthroughs I really hate it because you can only get it in certain places of the game. Uh, and that's a pain in the ass, especially when you get Magnemite like way later in the game. Licky Licky's ugly. Hate it. Don't like it. Uh, Rhyperia, also ugly. Don't like it. But I have had some good competitive usage with it, so I'll put it in C tier. Tangrowth is in S. Love Tangrowth. Really good Pokemon. Uh, especially competitively. And actually a nice upgrade on Tangler. Uh, Tangler was kind of mediocre until Tangrowth came along. And then obviously a Violet in Gen 5 made this even better. Uh, so Tangrowth definitely a good pick. Electivire, this is what I'm going to get flack for. But I'm actually not super keen on Electivire. Uh, I don't disdain it anywhere near as much as the D tier. Uh, but I actually just can't get behind Electivire. I'm very fond of Electabuzz. Uh, but Electivire just didn't really feel like a good evolution to me. Magmortar. Uh, I've had good memories with Magmortar, of course. We always call our Magmortar's butt duck in our playthroughs because it's just what, how immature we are. 
But it's a good Pokemon. Uh, decent physical special. It's just unfortunately a little bit slow. Uh, if it was faster, it would probably be an S tier. Togekiss, Hermes Game Corner's favorite Pokemon. Oh, bloody her. Um, ah, I'm not sure where I put Togekiss. Like, I've used it a fair bit in Sword and Shield VGC, and I do kind of like it, but I'm somewhat indifferent to Togekiss. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. But I am going to put it in A tier, though, I think. Um, I think its competitive usage has kind of tipped me over the edge of some of these Pokemon that uh, I'm, I'm indifferent to. Very, very fun Pokemon to use in competitive play. Uh, also, actually a really good addition to Cynthia's team in the Platinum versions of Gen 4 games. Yanmega! I'm a fan of Yanmega's design. I'm not a huge fan of its execution competitively. Uh, but Speed Boost is a fun ability to use, and Tinted Lens is not a bad ability either. Uh, I was actually watching a video by MV recently. He actually used the Yanmega in uh, Brilliant Diamond Shine and Pearl OU. That was a fun video to watch. Definitely had a fun way to use it. Uh, it's a cool Pokemon, not the hugest fan. Now, the evolutions in this gen, I actually am somewhat met on. Um, these compared to other evolutions just don't feel as good. Uh, it's, they're kind of okay-ish. They're passable, but I'm not super fond of them. Gliscor is in S tier. Love Gliscor. I'm so glad it's back. I've missed it. Mamoswine, also in S tier. Definitely one of my favorite Pokemon in this generation. Probably second only to Lucario, I guess, uh, with Infernape close behind. Uh, Porygon Z. Uh, we've had some good fun with Porygon Z in some of our Nuzlocke playthroughs, but I'm somewhat indifferent to it in general. Uh, obviously, it's okay and competitive with adaptability. It's fine. Gallade, S tier for me. Mega Gallade, also S tier. Really like these Pokemon. Uh, definitely great Pokemon designs and a really good addition to the game. Kind of giving Ralts a more masculine evolution as opposed to the only feminine God of War from Gen 3. So that was kind of a nice addition. Probopass is ugly. Hate it. Um, Dusk Noir. I'm a, I like Dusk Noir. I think Dusk Noir is kind of a nice addition. Usually I'm not a huge fan of later gen evolutions of previous gen Pokemon. But I think Dusk Noir, Yarn Maga, and Togekiss were probably the best executed of them. Uh, with Magnezone and Magmortar a little bit, a little bit behind. Uh, but yeah. Definitely a fan of Dusk Noir. I think Dusk Noir is a nice Pokemon. I wish it was better competitively, but it's a good Pokemon nonetheless. Frostlass, I'm somewhat indifferent to. Uh, I don't hate Frostlass, but I don't really like it either. Rotom and all the Rotom forms. Regular Rotom, not that big a fan of, of in terms of competitively, but it does have a nice design philosophy, so I'll put it there. Rotom Heat, I've had good success with in competitive. I'll put it in A tier. But my favorite Rotom is Rotom Wash. Uh, it's a really, really good Rotom for competitive play, and that's probably the reason why it tips it over the edge for me. Uh, Rotom Fridge, not super big on that one, unfortunately. Uh, Rotom Fan is D tier, it's kind of terrible. Uh, <laughs> and Rotom Mo, uh, probably the same as Rotom Heat. Definitely a really, really good Rotom, but not um, my favorite because it's weaker than Rotom Wash in competitive play. Lake Trio. Uh, I don't hate the Lake Trio, but I'm not super keen on them either. Uh, we did have been using Azelf in the RBL, so I will put it one tier higher. Um, I think Azelf's a fun Pokemon. I just haven't got to grips with using it competitively. And then it's Legendaries of Mythical's time. The Alga is S tier. Sorry, Tina. <laughs> just kidding. It's an A tier. It's a great Pokemon, uh, but I don't rate it all that highly. Uh, Palkia is a little bit worse in my opinion. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Heatran is S tier. This is one of my favorite uh, Pokemon from Gen 4 Competitive. Uh, Reggie Big Ass, of course. The absolute legend. Uh, definitely an S tier Pokemon. We've had some great memories with Reggie Gigas uh, in our Nuzlocke playthroughs and in Competitive too. Uh, really, really fun Pokemon. Giratina. I don't actually really like its base form, but I love the origin form. I'll put this in A tier. Um, even though the stats are not necessarily all that different, uh, Giratina Origins design actually looks menacing and actually looks like a legendary Pokemon. The base form just kind of looks like a poorly designed beta Pokemon. Cresselia is an S tier. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for this one, but I'm a huge fan of Cresselia. Uh, I've used it a lot in competitive play. Uh, I actually really like its design too. Uh, I kind of like its, its uh, concept. Manaphy is better than Fion. Fion is a complete waste of a deck slot, but Manaphy is S tier. Phenomenal Pokemon. Really, really phenomenal Pokemon in general. Uh, obviously, Tail Glow makes it so exciting to use. It's really, really fun. Uh, it's a great Pokemon, and usually Pokemon gets killed in my Nuzlocke. Uh, Darkrai is also S tier for me. 
huge fan of Darkrai. Um, uh, I think the Luna duo in general, Cresselia and Darkrai, did really well. They were really good executed Pokemon. So I'm super happy with both of those. Shaman. I've had good memories with Shaman. I like it a lot competitively. Um, obviously, my friend Denise Joe will hate it because they had a Shaman against me and they couldn't land their moves. <laughs> Sorry, Denise Joe, for bringing up the PTSD. Shaman Sky form. I'm not that big of a fan of, unfortunately. Uh, I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. And then Arceus. Arceus. I've never used all that much because I don't play a lot of Uber's competitive play. Uh, its design's a little bit mad to me. I'll put it in B tier. Uh, I do like the concept of it having like multiple types though, uh, depending on what plate it's holding and stuff like that. I thought that was cool. It's a nice concept. I might like it more once Legends Arceus comes out, but I'm kind of mad on it right now. But that is going to be my tier list for the center region. Let me know what you think about this tier list down below, of course. Also, I will have this saved and stored up and probably tweet this out as well when the video goes live. So if you agree with any of my decisions, let me know. If you don't agree, hey, if one of my favorite Pokemon is one of your least favorite Pokemon, definitely let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Ruami Teacher. Stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the hits. Hit. And if you liked the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so that you never miss an upload. We upload every single day on this channel. Make sure you're following me on all of my social medias on the screen right now. And a huge shout out to the shiny Rabombies of this month, Araya Jade, The Crazed Artist, Mr. Burns1988, and Average Gaming017. Thank you all for your continued support.